In today's video, I thought I'd help you navigate the confusing jungle of buying a drill driver power tool by explaining to you the difference between the four main categories. I'll also be outlining what I've found to be the perfect combination for my DIY, and I'll be busting a few myths about battery loyalty so that you have the information that you need to buy the right tool for your DIY projects. Put simply, this is the most useful power tool you'll ever own. But buying a cordless power tool that can both drill and drive in screws is a bit of a minefield. Because quite frankly, there are hundreds of options out there. And even within one brand, there are normally at least three variants of each type of power tool, often with the differences between each not properly described in the specs. So let's first have a quick run through of all the different types of tool because you'll need to understand these differences if you're gonna find the right tool at the right price for your DIY projects. First up, we've got drill drivers, which typically are small and light and don't have a hammer action and they can both drive in screws and drill holes. We then got combi drills or percussion drills as they're often called, which do have a hammer action that you can switch on or off for drilling, but can also drive in screws. But with its larger motor, greater torque and hammer action, the combi tends to be much heavier than its drill driver counterpart. And weight for me is a massive consideration in my day-to-day -day DIY. If I'm handling a tool all day, I want the lightest possible tool that can do that task. And both the drill driver and combi typically have a clutch that you can set precisely to prevent over counter sinking of the screw. Next up, we've got impact drivers, which also have a hammer or impact action. People get really confused here and I've had hundreds of comments on the channel saying, why can't I just use the hammer action on my combi drill rather than buying an impact? Well, the answer is a categorical no, you can't because the hammering action on an impact driver is rotational. It hammers in the direction the bit is turning to make driving in screws effortless. Whereas the action on a percussion drill is in and out of the wall or parallel to the drill bit, as it's designed for drill bits, not screws. And finally, we've got SDS drills, which have a much more powerful hammer action than combis, as the hammer action travels so much further than it does on this combi drill. Making SDS drills ideal for heavy duty drilling into concrete and chiseling. And if things weren't complicated enough, you now get to choose between brushed and brushless variations of each tool, which I'll come on to in a bit. And why am I telling you this? Well, at risk of stating the obvious, when you buy one of these tools, you need to think about what you're gonna use it for, as well as, of course, your budget. And if budget is tight, and you want a tool to cover as many bases as possible, then an all-rounder tool like the Combi is a great place to start your DIY journey. Because it does everything, albeit with limitations when drilling into stone and concrete, which I'll come on to in a minute. If, however, you're wanting to future-proof your power tools for your DIY journey, then that fourth category list I've just run through comes more into play. And here's why. Day-to-day -day for lightweight jobs like removing screws or drilling into soft wood, I absolutely love my lightweight 12-volt Ryobi drill driver. I hardly ever use my combi or even my 18-volt drill driver. Firstly, I find the combi, even with the 2AH battery on it, just too heavy to log around all day. You wouldn't think this would be an issue, but it really is. I instinctively reach for my 12 volt whenever I go into my tool bag. And my carpenter mate John, who uses Makita tools, does exactly the same thing when he helps me out in the day job. Secondly, as time progresses, you'll find your combi has limitations, such as the hassle of constantly changing drill and screwdriver bits when you're using that tool for two different jobs at the same time. But the main issue is when you're drilling into walls. You'll find it handles soft bricks just fine, but when it comes to drilling into harder masonry and concrete, the hammer action, which is ear-piercingly loud, is just not up to it. And I know this because I spent a good couple of stressful hours once at a customer's house with my Makita mains hammer action drill, and it simply wouldn't touch the concrete lintel I was trying to screw some blinds up into. The hammer action is just too weak. It doesn't travel far enough to have the percussive effect it needs to penetrate concrete. So for me, the perfect combination is a lightweight drill driver for most of your DIY drilling and screw driving tasks. And then an SDS drill for drilling into masonry and concrete. And if you want more information on SDS drills, check out my recent video coming up on screen now. But what about the impact driver, I hear you ask? Yes, the combination of a very lightweight tool high torque and that rotational hammer action do make this incredibly good for, for repetitive tasks like the decking I put down in the summer. 
However, I use this tool so rarely I wouldn't be worrying about getting one of these right now unless you find it in a starter kit deal where the other tools are things that you definitely want. So what would I buy? Well, there are so many drill driver combi tool variations on the market and budget, not to mention brand loyalty, plays a massive part to make this a very personal decision that people get quite excited or heated about. Whatever I say, people will disagree, which is their right, because I can only give you my personal opinion based on my experience. However, I will say this. My Ryobi seems to have been discontinued right now in the UK, although there are variants on Amazon. Although my Urbau drill driver is still available and has been a very capable tool since I reviewed it for B&Q a couple of years ago. But out of curiosity the other day, I bought myself this Milwaukee equivalent for £149 from Screwfix. After a reasonable amount of stick over the years in the comments section from tool snobs over my use of Ryobi, which I still love by the way, I thought I'd go for one of the most respected brands in the industry. And with a metal chuck, all metal gearbox, 30 newton meters of torque, two speeds and a hammer action, two two amp hour batteries weighing only 1.3 kilograms and a three year warranty, I thought that was good value. And it was at 79 pounds on Toolstation a couple of days ago until it went out of stock. If you're interested in this, just be wary. There are two versions. You know what I was saying earlier on about brands confusing us. There's one version with almost identical specs, but it doesn't have a hammer action. Why did I go for a hammer action after criticizing the Combi Drills hammer action? Well, I was mindful of the fact some of you will still want a universal tool. And given it was the same price and same specs, as the non-hammer action version, I thought I might as well give it a go. What are the downsides to this subcompact combi drill? With its smaller 12 volt battery, you get slightly less power, 10 newton meters less than you would with my 18 volt drill driver. But I've never had a problem with power or battery life with my little Ryobi, which has a 1.3 AH battery. And this has a superior two amp hour battery and two of them. For large six millimeter diameter screws like this, I found in screwdriver mode, the clutch kicked in even on its highest setting meaning I had to switch it to drill mode. But I didn't see a major problem with this because it had the power to drive the screw home in drill mode. And on my drill driver and combi, I very rarely use the clutch anyway. The no load speed is slightly less at 1500 rather than the 1700 RPM that I have on my 18 volt drill driver. And the chuck takes a 10 millimeter diameter drill rather than a 13 millimeter as you'd get more commonly with your 18 volt drill driver or combi. But how often do you need to put an 11 or 12 millimeter drill bit into your drill? And if you find you need that extra torque, you can always just take your SDS off hammer action. On SDS drills, there are some good reasonably priced options out there. I've had my eye on this SDS from Urbauer for some time. And it's also included in this quite interesting starter kit along with an impact and drill driver. Alternatively, for £70, you can buy this Titan, which has featured in a number of my DIY projects. It's a bit of a beast, but it's so much tool for your money and has achieved almost unanimous good reviews. And it will do all the drilling and chiseling you could ever possibly ask for it. And this package, there is a cheaper one, comes with a huge array of SDS accessories which is really helpful because as you may know, SGS drill bits have a different shank to standard ones. So it's worth keeping your eye on the starter kits because they can have some great deals. And at the time of making this video, Ryobi are giving away a free bare tool, which is without battery, which include two of the most useful tools in my collection, this leaf blower and this vacuum. Should we be getting hung up about whether our power tools have brushed or brushless motors? All power tools used to have brushed motors, which basically had magnets inside that powered the motor. And by dispensing with those magnets and replacing them with electrical circuitry instead, brushless motors have got rid of the friction and the heat, and that has led to longer battery life and more power. However, tools with brushless motors are more expensive and there are still a lot of brush motors on the market. This new Milwaukee has a brushed motor. So I would say to you, if you're embarking on your DIY journey, don't obsess about having a tool with a brushless motor. They are more expensive and you probably won't notice the difference. Choose a tool that you like the specification of and if it has a brushed motor, it'll probably save you a bit of money. A couple of final quick words about batteries. Now, in an ideal world, you'll have at least two batteries for each tool or selection of tools. Firstly, because you'll be wanting to use one battery whilst charging the other so that dead batteries don't put a stop to your DIY. Ideally, you'll have something small and light like a 2AH battery and then a 4 or 5AH battery. The 2AH battery will be fine for most DIY jobs and it helps to keep the weight of your tool down. 
but you'll also ideally want a 4 or 5 AH battery for more power hungry tools like SDS drills, circular saws or even my electric chainsaw. So if you're looking at the starter kits, take a close look at what batteries they're offering. Secondly, I promise to talk to you about battery systems tying you to brands. Firstly, you shouldn't worry about getting yourself a 12 volt drill driver because the 12 volt charger will obviously be different to your existing battery chargers, even if you've gone with the same brand. Now for tradesmen, I totally get that they want to stick with one brand and one battery system because they're going to want to charge multiple batteries on site, probably with a multi-fast charging port. They don't want to be lugging hundreds of chargers around. But for us DIYers, I don't know why we get so hung up about brand loyalty. When I got these Urbad tools a couple of years ago, I suddenly had two new batteries and a new charger. And to be honest with you, I haven't skipped a beat. If anything, I've found it incredibly useful to have an extra charger. So I say to you, keep the manufacturers on their toes by being unfaithful for a change. If you find a new tool that you really want for one of your DIY projects, and it's got a couple of decent sized batteries at the right price, then go for it. You won't regret it. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. As this subject is so subjective, it's just my thoughts based on my own experiences. A lot of you out there will have your own very strong views about what constitutes the perfect power tool combination. So do please let us know in the comment section below because the comment section provides such a valuable resource to us all when we're looking to buy new kit. As usual, details of everything featured today will be in the description below the video, which don't forget you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. If you liked today's video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up below. And if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon so you get notified of all future uploads. See you soon.